Welcome to the second session of Extreme Mindfulness Challenge. The second session is about emotional healing. Our first section is about mental healing, coming out of habitual, addictive, compulsive thoughts and being able to observe reality the way that it really is, without judgment, without label. That's a powerful skill. And once you've learned that skill, then each day in your life, to whatever degree you've learned it, it's going to be more and more um, will be more and more relaxing for you, will be more and more peaceful for you, will be more and more fulfilling for you. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take and look back at the past. We're going to look at a past experience and use the skill of breaking that chain of automatic behavior and looking to see what's underneath, looking to see that subtle sensation underneath. And I invite you to do so with me now. Put your both feet flat on the floor. Put your left hand on your left thigh, your right hand on your right thigh, Really ground in the left side of your body into the left side of the ground uh, on your floor and the right side of your body into your right, through your right foot into the floor. Really ground it. And now breathe deeply. Breathe deeply in and breathe deeply out. Straighten the spine. Pull on that little imaginary puppet string at the top of the head, lifting the head, the neck, straightening up the upper neck and um and this uh, shoulders area, the chin drops down. And do that little Buddha smile, if you like, that little Mona Lisa smile. And then do that core contraction, pulling the belly button back towards the spine, shifting the pelvic floor slightly forward. And with this posture now in, in mind, just imagine yourself, you're sitting in your chair right now, and just look over there, and you see a giant elevator, a giant elevator shaft that goes all the way from the center of the earth all the way out to the center of the universe, past our sun, past our galaxy, through all the galaxies into the center of the galaxies, the center of the universe. And just see this giant elevator shaft and imagine it being filled with light, filled with light all the way down to the center of the earth. And this light is so bright and so white and so pure that it dims every other light. You can have the brightest color shirt and it looks gray in this light. You can look at the sun, which is normally quite bright, and quite white, and quite yellow. And you look at the sun and it looks orange. In fact, tan. In fact, gray. This light is so bright, so piercing. And then just see how dense this light is. And I invite you to go ahead and step into it. Step into the elevator shaft and just float there in this elevator shaft. Allow that light to come in and wash over your feet. Allow the light to come in and wash over your head as though you're standing in a shower, as though you are got a deep dive into a swimming pool and you're just immersed in light, covered in light. And I invite you to bring this light down through and fill and allow it to pierce every aspect of your body. Pierce your head, your skull, the part of you that's closest to heaven, the part of you that is the perfection of all things. Bring this light down into that pineal gland, this ability to dream, the ability to vision, the, dream, the ability to have some hypnagogia, which is what we're having now. We're having a lucid dream. You're just dreaming whatever you want. We're calling forth a dream, having that dream. You're having yours, I'm having mine. Bring it down, bring that light down into the throat space, which is all about speaking the truth of your experience and listening to the truth of others. And bring it down into the heart space, which is all about compassion, which is all about nurturing, which is all about living. And bring that, that light down into the solar plexus, which is where we get that second wind, right? Where you get the stamina, where you get the courage to make a choice. Really let this light activate that part of you, willing to make choices, willing to have stamina, willing to have courage. Bring the light down into the sacral part of you. That part of you at your gut, where your intestines are, where the womb is for a female. This represents the genitals, the creative power for males and females. It's also the area where you take in nutrients and you expel toxins. This is also the area where you can choose your genetic code, actually turn genetic code on and off. You can actually become a different being, basically who you are, but adapting, becoming more of exactly what it is you want to become. Then bring that light down into the genetic code. This is the part of you that's, uh, this is the molecular part of you that codes your entire existence. This is how your physical body is based. This is really the result of your spiritual body. This genetic code is kind of like your covenant with the universe. Let this light just fill that, that genetic code. 
fill that most basic part of you. Then let the light go all the way down to the center of the earth. Then bring it back up through now. The light coming from the center of the earth through all the layers of crust, through all the aquifers into your genetic code, you know, piercing and generating and enlivening your genetic code, bring it up to your sacral area. So you're choosing which genes to turn off and on, choosing which experiences are toxic and which experiences are healthful. Bring it up to your solar plexus now so you're able to choose from your personal sovereignty. You are a divine being, a separate being. And you have the right to choose. You have courage. You have stamina. And then bring your hand, bring this energy up into your heart space. I'm touching my heart space right now. And everything below is my lower self. This is the part of me that's, that's attached to gravity, that's attached to uh, the lower self, to Maslow's needs hierarchy. But my hand is on my portal, on my chest. That connects me with the upper part of my body, which is my ability to dream, my ability to be in perfect alignment with all the universe. My ability to speak the truth of my experience and hear the truth of others. And now I bring that light into this room that I'm sitting in. And bring it into yours. I invite you to bring it into yours. One hand on your heart space, the other hand out. Present this light to this room and let this light pierce every aspect of this room. The flooring, the floorboards, the paint, the lights, the lighting. Infuse every aspect of this room with this pure light. And now I invite you to convert this white light experience into a physical white cloud experience. So you're breathing in this white cloud and this white cloud breathes in and it massages every part of your brain, your sinuses, your optic nerve, your tongue, your throat. And then uh, I invite you to, to breathe it into your chest, your lungs, your, all your vital organs down through your entire cavity. Breathe it all the way down to your feet, to your ankles. So that every cell in your body, your knees, your elbows, your toes, your shoulders, every cell in your body is being pierced with this white light and being washed by this white cloud. A white cloud is like a power wash. It just swirls around at times becoming like a tornado, touching down and releasing a certain impurity. Breathing out that gray cloud, that impure cloud, breathing it out, letting it vaporize in the sun and becoming the stuff of which the universe is made. Breathing in, breathing out. And now this light is filling this room. This cloud is filling this room. This room is now a sacred space. It's a clear space. And I invite you now to have an experience. I want you to think back on an emotion that you've had lately. And let it be a reoccurring emotion, something you've, um, that you've reoccurred before or not. Whatever comes up for you. Just feel this feeling that you've had, this little sense of inner tension. Put your hand on your body where you feel it. If you don't know exactly where that is, just trust yourself and put your hand on your body where you would feel it if you were feeling it. And just breathe and feel. Allow yourself to feel and expand in this sensation of emotion. Continue to breathe. Continue to let this feeling build. Continue to think back. When did I feel this way before? This is not the first time I felt this feeling, right? I felt it before. What was going on when I was feeling this feeling? Who was there? And what was being said? And let's go back into previous experiences. Let's go back to last week when you felt this feeling or last month or last year. Let's go back to five years ago when you felt this feeling. Let's go back to in your early relationships. Go back to high school. Maybe go back into grammar school. In fact, go back as early as you can, even before school. When did you feel this way? When was the first time you felt this way? Without being logical about it, just go back to that very first time. Without being logical, is it daytime or nighttime? You're feeling this feeling. Are you alone or are you with someone? You're feeling this feeling. And what are these people saying to you? What is this person saying to you? Or if no one's there, who should be there and who should be saying something to you? And with this experience going on right now, with this feeling going on right now, what judgment are you making about yourself? Are you deciding that you're pretty smart? Are you deciding you're pretty stupid? Are you deciding that you're alone? Are you deciding that you're supported? What are you deciding about yourself? 
You're buying into this feeling. You're taking it personally. And you're making a decision. Own that decision. Own these people. What are they saying? How are you responding? But now go one, go deeper than that. What was the positive intention? Why were you here in the first place? What were you attempting to do? And now you have this feeling, whatever it is, look underneath that and see the positive intention underneath that. Why were you there? And what if the situation manifested for the highest good of all concerned? Feel that feeling that this this situation, which you had so many judgments about at one point, is now for the highest good of all concerned. Feel that feeling and bring that feeling forward each day in time, back from the beginning, back through each time you've had this feeling before, this feeling of upset or this negative feeling, now bringing forth this positive intention all the way through, bringing it up day by day, moment by moment, until you're in this moment, feeling this magnificence. What if this really did occur for the highest good of all concerned? And now what I want you to do is project this into the future. Now, the brain likes to see the future as increments. But, you know, time happens all at once for everybody. And I invite you to allow it to happen all at once. So what you want to do is like you want to set up. Each person gets their own little game to play, like as if you're playing chess. Let's say you're a master chess player. And each person in your life is playing chess with you over this situation over this particular feeling. And so each person gets their own game and you become like a master chess player playing 20 people or 30 people or 50 people or five people. And you walk around from chess game to chess game. They move and you move and then you move on to the next game. Well, here's how we're doing this. There's this situation. There's this feeling, this feeling of magnificence. And this person has the power to experience this or not. Let them have their experience. What are they choosing? Let them choose whatever they want to choose, and then you choose from this source of highest good. You choose from this space of magnificence, from this space of achievement, from this space of completeness. They choose, you choose, and then you move on to the next person. Then they choose, and you choose. They choose from whatever perspective they want to. They can hang on to any belief system they want to, but you choose based on the highest good for all concerned. And so it goes around the room. They choose, you choose. They choose, you choose. And everybody gets as many moves as they want. The game is not over for anyone until they say it's over. They choose and you choose. And every time you choose, you choose from the positive experience, the most positive experience, the most magnificent of experiences. Now, there may be some... Now that you've done the future, bring this all back to the present moment. So the future, the present, and the past are all here right now. And I want you to go up to your laboratory and bring down this, a gift of hidden potential, a gift of something maybe that's been forgotten. Maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe they've forgotten it. Go back up into your laboratory. Go back into your office. Right next to your office there, there's a desk. Right next to your desk, there are these boxes with these gifts, gifts of hidden potential. Many boxes. Pick one. Pick one for this situation. Just trust yourself. Pick the box. Bring it down into the situation. Open the box and allow the situation to experience this gift you're giving it. You may recognize the gift. You may smile when you see the gift. You may not recognize the gift. But in any case, allow this gift to manifest on this situation as though it were a rainbow. You know, with every opportunity being filled, at least this opportunity the opportunity of this gift. Feel this magnificence. And now what I'm going to invite you to do is I want you to make sure you're feeling this magnificence and this gift in every part of your body. Ready? Let's start at the top of your head and bring the situation to the top of your head and let it integrate there with the top of your head. This is known as the crown or the part of you that's closest to heaven. This is the part of you that's closest to your higher power, highest power. Now, experience the magnificence right there at the top of your head. All of its magnificence. Bring this down into your pineal gland, the power to dream, the power to see potential without any reason why. And just really fill this magnificence here with this power to dream and the power to see. Bring it down to your throat space so that you're able to speak the truth of your experience and listen to the truth of others. Bring it into your heart space so that this situation is about nurturing and about being nurtured. It's about compassion. 
Bring it down to your solar plexus. Give yourself that second wind. Give yourself that stamina, that courage to be exactly who you are, to have your experience, to learn from your experience and to allow others to learn from theirs. Bring it down to your gut space, which is all about nutrients and it's all about taking out the toxins. It's all about adapting. It's all about turning on genetic code and turning off genetic code as needed in order to fulfill your expectations. And then bring it down into your authentic root self, your genetic code. The part of you that's the authentic you, the part of you, the infant you that started out on this planet and just really feel this infant you growing into the situation, adapting, growing, choosing, and then take it down to the center of the earth, being purified, grounded. So there's nothing silly here. There's nothing superfluous. Everything is on purpose. Bring it up from the center of the earth up now through every energy center in your body, your authenticity, your adaptability, your stamina, your courage, your heart space, your compassion, your throat space, speaking the truth of your experience. Your pineal gland, being able to see the outcome and, and without knowing why or how, just see this favorable outcome, this magnificent outcome and connecting to the top of your head. And now with one hand in your heart space and the other hand out, project the situation fully endowed with all this energy into this room. So that those who are present in the room, those who are going to be in the room, so that everyone present has an opportunity to experience this magnificence. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count from one to seven. Now, from one to six, I want you to infuse yourself with this magnificence in every aspect of your being. On the count of seven, we're going to create invitations for other people because we can't make them. And we can't make them feel anything. We can't make them observe everything. Everybody gets to be their own boss. Everybody gets to have their own experience. Ready? One, re-experience the weight of your body in the chair, the weight of your feet on the floor, the actual floor. Tap your feet. This is the dream of domestication. Feel it. It feels, it feels separate, right? Okay, now two, infuse this seat. Infuse your body. Infuse your feet. Infuse the floor with this magnificence. No longer separated. Full of magnificence. And then three, re-experience the weight of your body in the chair, the weight of your feet on the floor, the floor, the walls, the ceiling, the ambient light in the room, the furniture. And now infuse every aspect of this room with this magnificence. Infuse the lighting and infuse the photons, the light in the room, the ambient light in the room, infuse with this magnificence. So it just glows. Every aspect of your body the chair, your feet, the floor, every aspect infused. And then five, re-experience the weight of your body in the chair, the weight of your feet on the floor, the floor, the walls, the ceiling. But now experience the sensation of the atmosphere in the room on your skin and experience the sensations of your clothing on your body, your shoulders, your chest, your back, your legs, your arms. And now six, infuse those sensations with this magnificence and allow those to spread into the body, penetrating the body. Now filled with magnificence. And now the count of seven. And then the count of seven, what we're going to do is we're going to transition here and create an invitation for other people. For us so far, it's been about radical forgiveness. We've been able to look back at the past, seeing the past for what it was, and find that hidden potential, find that magnificence. And with that magnificence now balanced out by original experience, we're experiencing a more clarity than ever before. We're experiencing unforeseen potential, serendipity, and synchronicity, and how important this experience is for life experience. We've sat and we've done an infusion, infusing our body in this room, and now we're going to create an invitation. How do you create an invitation? We're going to transition from, uh, from curing our own emotional allergies now to creating actual physical behavior relative to this. This is a physical, this is an important transition. How do we do it? Number one, first of all, notice the words that have been said today. Notice the words I've said and notice the words that you have said as you've considered and pondered the situation that I've presented with you and that you presented with yourself. Notice the words. 
I want you to start creating a dictionary for these words. Be clear on the very best words. Share them with me. Send me an email. Share them with other people. Converse with others. Decide on which words are very best for you that give you clarity and purpose. What experience are you looking for? And what words support you in having that experience? What words motivate you? Eliminate the ambiguity in your life simply by creating that dictionary and focusing on these words. Now, two, start negotiating with other people. This is where it becomes real. What does this word mean to you? Explain it to them. What does that word mean to them? Let them explain it to you. If they use a different word than you, ask them. Notice that word and ask them about that word. The goal here is to create a lexicon in your family, in your work, in your community, where everybody's on the same page. Does that make sense? This idea is about disambiguating your life by simply working with others to determine what language is appropriate to them. Do what you can to create a consensus. Do what you can to create an agreement about how words mean. But hey, don't compromise yourself. Agree to disagree. Got it? Now, the next step is you've got these words down. The next step is to really practice being your words and practice being your word. If you say no, mean no and do no. If you say yes, mean yes and do yes. And the way you do this is you write it down. You write it down on your calendar. I'd say, I'm going to do this. If you haven't written a plan in 12 to 24 hours, then go back and renegotiate. Go back. And if you said no and you don't have a plan, renegotiate to a yes. And if you said yes and you don't have a plan, renegotiate to a no. This whole goal is about eliminating ambiguity. It's about focusing your life. And everything's written down. So either it's scheduled for a discussion in the future or you've got a plan to make it happen. And now... Now that you've gotten there, now that you have a written commitment, I invite you to go back through every aspect of your life and make sure there are no relationships that are unspoken. Let every relationship in your life be governed by words so there's no implied communication. Be explicit. Now, now that you've gotten everything written down, let's. it's time to Update that promise list and now rate each item on that list, each word on the list, each task on the list, each item on the list, rate them in terms of two categories. One is ease of accomplishment. And number two is desirability. How easy is this thing to do? Well, if it's really, really hard, give it a zero. If it's really, really easy, give it a 10. How desirable is this thing to do? Wow, it's really desirable, give it a 10. If it's not very desirable, desirable give, it a, give it a zero. And now you've got every word, every task, every commitment rated with two numbers from zero to 10. Add the numbers together and always start with a high number first. Always start with the high numbers first. Make amends when doing so will be for the highest good of all concerned. Send out those emails. Send out those text messages. Go face to face when you can. Get clear. Be your words and be your word. Well, that's basically it for this recording for the second part of our Extreme Mindfulness Challenge. Now we're going to begin a third part. In this third part, uh, we're going to start a new recording for it. But in this third part, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the attributes in our body Take a look at what attributes we have as part of our beingness and how, do, how does our beingness affect our living, our lives, to our word and being our word. May all beings experience a full measure of their purpose. May all beings experience a full measure of their potential. May all beings experience a full measure of their creation. Oh. Okay, so that ends that section. If you have time to stay with us, we're going to go to a third session. We're going to talk about attributes in our body and how we can, uh, what motivate, what a motivate, what motivates you and me to do what we do, and how do we change that motivation? How do we become aware and always move towards this highest good? We'll start that call momentarily. <laughs>